is going on guys, it's Nick from Surfcast in the Island and today I'm going to be talking about my preferred jetty setups for you guys. Um, I know it's been quite some time since I last posted, um, I've been frequently posting those weekly surf casting reports I've kind of dumbed down on those mainly because you know the fishing kind of slowed down in my eyes locally in the southwestern uh, Nassau area it's mostly just bluefish not a lot of bass around at least I would like to believe the times I've gone out haven't really had um, much results in regards to that but um, yeah I'm here to show you the preferred setups I use on the jetty so stay tuned so in recent weeks and as a whole, I've been getting some pretty positive feedback, um, not only on my report videos, but also, you know, how to tie certain knots, um, certain plugs to throw, why to throw them, how do you throw them, uh, but neither here nor there. Um, this could be actually my first requested video um, on certain setups. It was brought to my attention that um, someone wanted me to put up a video of, you know, preferred jetty setups and whatnot. He went through the loops to say I used to use the nine, uh, nine foot six Airwave Elite, which is a great rod all around. I'll also do a video on that because it's one of my go-tos. It's very versatile. But uh, when it comes to the jetty, um, this particular user, you know, had trouble, you know, landing fish. And um, personally, I like um, shorter rods for the jetty. These two rods are nine and nine two that I'm going to get into. And the reason being is you have less of a probability of high sticking a rod. Um, for those of you who don't know what high sticking is, it's pretty much putting too much pressure on the tip of the rod um, and it pretty much snaps. So if you have a fish on and you leverage it at a high angle and you keep it there, it falls into a rock, the fish makes a certain movement, it'll cause the rod to break. Um, obviously you don't want that you know a lot of these rods are very expensive but here we go the first rod I'm going to show you this is a Lama Glass GSB 9 footer um, this is the 1081M blank so this is rated from 3 quarters to 3 ounces um, typically when I'm on the jetty and the fish are smaller you know cocktail blues and you know stripers you know low slot to mid slot this is probably what I'm gonna go with. Um, obviously, you can handle larger fish as well, but which I'll get into later on. But as a whole, this is a great rod for the jetty. Um, it's not really gonna give you many problems um, flipping fish, especially like I said, fish of the smaller size. Um, the reel I have paired with it is a VS 150, VS X 150, I should say. Um, I'm not going to get into the specs of this reel because it's more so to focus on the rod. Um, I've done previous videos if you guys want to check that out on the specifications, line capacity, drag, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's just a great, great pairing for a rod and reel. I'll sh briefly show you the bend on this rod so you see what I'm saying. As you can see, it bends pretty much in the top third, maybe a little further down. Um, you know, you don't want a lot of give when you come to a jetty rod. You want something that's stout, like a broomstick, has a lot of backbone. Um, in terms of what I throw on this rod, um, just like any other moderate to moderate fast action rod, you know, bucktails, anywhere from three quarters to an ounce and a half is ideal on this rod, SP minnows are great, small poppers, um, mag daughters, pretty much get you through the loops. Uh, that's you know mainly what I throw and those types of, obviously I haven't mentioned tins, tins work great, any type of spoons or diamond jigs. Um, but yeah, it has you know very, very, you know, very good setup. Um, not a lot of complaints. K guides you have your um, new concept guides just uh, and yeah that's pretty much it this would be my smaller fish setup so if I know if there's a bigger bait pattern in the area more often than not this is also going to warrant the fact that there's going to be bigger fish in the area as well um, this is also especially going to be the case 
you're fishing around a certain moon, wind, and tide that would act as catalysts for this big fish behavior. Um, the next rod I'm going to show you is a 9 foot 2 GSB 1101 L ML blank. Um, this is more well known as the John Skinner rod. Um, for you guys that may or may not know who he is, he's probably one of the most renowned surf casters in the Northeast that once lived here. Um, but a little background about the rod, other than his name staple to it, is the fact that he cut a foot off the back to make the rod a little more moderate and have a sweet spot somewhere in the middle where you could also throw bigger plugs, but at the same time you could, you know, act a little more finesse and low key. Um, the rod is rated for uh, one to three ounces. So it's, you know, it's a little bit heavier than the previous rod I showed you. Um, particularly, I have it um, set up with a Vanstall VR150. Great, great reel in my opinion, especially for a heavier rod setup. It has a higher drag output than the VS150 to my knowledge. I won't get into the specs like I said before if you guys want to check out. I have a comparison video of the VS150 and the VR150. Um, so what have I thrown on this so far? Um, it's great for you know those big two ounce Gibbs pencil poppers, um, you know bigger bucktails, and you're fishing heavy rips. Whether you're fishing Democrat or Shinnecock, you could bump up you know higher than an ounce and a half. You go two ounce, three ounce on this rod. Um, I know John himself also mentioned, you know, the rigged eels he's thrown, or live eels he's thrown on this rod have been heavier than three ounces. So you can't always go by the rating of the rod. Um, you just have to go out there and experiment by yourself and, you know, figure out what works and what doesn't. So that brings me to the conclusion I haven't really thrown, you know, bottle plugs or daughters, but, you know, those are less than three ounces, a lot of those, two, two to three eighths ounces. And, um, stuff like that so I, I would imagine um, those would work just fine on this rod as well um, you know this setup is a little different this is actually pretty much a replica of how John built the rod because it has the old-school Fuji Alkanites as opposed to the Fuji K guys I showed you on the previous rod it's only a um, five guide setup I actually do like the less um, the least amount of guides sometimes especially when I'm fishing at night um, and the reason being is if you do tend to snap off, um, you, know, you don't have to go through a million guide setup just to get through the tip in the middle of the night. It's a pain in the ass. Um, you know, especially if you have heavy winds, you're getting sprayed with the soak. Um, you know, sometimes less is more in that matter. Not that I have anything against um, more guides, but um, if I'm fishing at night, you know, that may be something to consider. Um, I'll show you guys the bend in this rod. It has more of a moderate action. Uh, it has a little more give, but at the same time, it does come to a backbone around, you know, halfway down the rod. I can show you. See, it's got a little more give, but it does have a backbone. So you can play those fish pretty well. Um, you'll still have fun with the schoolies, but if you have to. You know stop a bigger fish which i haven't gotten the chance to yet when i say bigger you know anything 20 and over this day and age i've had a couple of teen size fish already but um yeah just by you know handling this rod and reel um it's handled you know teen size bluefish perfectly 15 16 17 pound fish we'll have them in the surf on the surface in you know 30 seconds have them on, you know, have them on land in a minute, two minutes tops from uh, my experience so far. So, like I said, if there's bigger fish around, you're looking to move bigger fish out of the way to get that trophy, go with the 9-2. If you want to just play around with schoolies, you know, and medium-sized fish, um, go with the 9-footer. It's as simple as that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It pretty much concludes this episode. If you guys liked it please like comment hit that subscribe button and don't forget to follow me on instagram my public page at surfcasting underscore the underscore island thank you and have a nice day